update 5.9 has come storming out of the gates with 7 new refines for us. Today we'll be talking about the new weapon effects for Male Kana, Legendary Lin, Legendary Ephraim, and the Choose Your Legends 3 winners. For the third year in a row, the past UI units have jumped to the front of the refined queue. This time it's for Brave Camilla, Makaya, Elliewood, and Alm. There are some really good refines here, so be careful with how much divine do you spend. Starting off with Melkana, he is a blue infantry dragon and a heroic rail unit. He does get a new weapon, the Dust Dragonstone. This is a 16 minute weapon and if the foe initiates or if they have more than 75% HP at the start of combat, Kana gets plus 4 at all stats. Very basic effect so far. With the refined upgrade, if Kana is within 3 spaces of an ally, he gets another plus 4 at all stats and restores 7 HP after combat. As our only free unit this month, Kana does have the most tame refine. Basically, he can get plus 8 doll stats and a 7 HP heal after every fight. Mel Kana has a pretty balanced stat spread, so adding plus 8 to everything is pretty nice. Getting to heal after every fight is also a great ability. For the most part, Mel Kana is still a somewhat enemy phase type unit. He can activate both effects on the player phase, but just don't need to stay near your teammates. I think it's okay if you want to try a more offensive setup though. In terms of builds, I think we can call upon an old Dragon Classic. With Steady Breath in the Sacred Seal slot now, Kana can take Distinct Counter to use with his General Stamp boost. In fact, because he heals 7 HP after every fight, he could also run Brave Mart's Distant Pressure A skill, which gets Kana an extra plus high speed as well. To continue the speed trend, you can run things like Low Attack and Speed to become tankier and Disable Attack and Speed Field Buffs. Now, Kana will be an extremely flexible unit to build. You have a lot of options, including or considering his banned stats with an extra plus 8 on top. Steady Breath is great for some special corner reduction, and that can get some Aether or Bonfire or Ignis spam going. If you want to go for even more defensive skills, you could try to run Dragon Wall, which is the dragon only damage reduction B skill. It does a res check, so you're going to need to pump Kana's res up a bit, and you can do that with Forge's David Sunrise 3 or a Menace skill. Similar to how Wyvern Flight synergizes with Attack and Defense Menace, Dragon Wall kind of synergizes with Attack and Res Menace. Kana's going to get that plus 6 res buff, and he's going to debuff the foe with minus 6 res. Obviously, that makes Dragon Wall's res check easier, and he's going to deal more damage too, so it's pretty good. As you've seen with Fallen Edelgard, damage reduction with 7 HP or 7 HP heals after every single fight is kind of a problem. In fact, Mail Kana can even go for the double Mystic Boost, 14 HP heals that Edelgard also uses, although obviously she's got a lot more going on. Besides Dragon Wall, if you don't want to invest in speed, you can take Dragon's Ire for quicker posts. Kana could run things like No Fall Up if you don't want to get abused by guaranteed doubles. For A skills, you could go with things like or defensive options like Unity, Tier 3 Dual Stances, or Bond skills. Kana could also go with a Rally plus Ruse setup to get guard for your team and just be an annoying tanky unit. For the most part, Milkana isn't exactly specializing in anything, he's just stacking stats and can heal after every fight, which means he'll be fun in extended battles. He kind of feels like Noe as a blue dragon with a bunch of stats, but obviously you don't have distant counter on the weapon. Definitely not a game breaker to find, but you do have a lot of freedom to work with. Next up is Legendary Lin, a green infantry archer, and I would say she was probably considered the worst legendary hero for a long time, maybe tied with Legendary Brioma. Lin did get her remix buffs a while ago, but now she's got the refine for Swift Mulligir. It did get a change to its base effect, instead of needing more allies than enemies nearby. Now if any allies within 3 spaces of Lin, she gets plus 5 attack and speed, and will also get Bramimon's impenetrable dark C skill. For those not familiar, this disables all other skills besides what's on the foe Lin is fighting. So that means no support buffs from drive skills or things like Bravely Cena's extra special cooldown. Lin will now challenge her opponent to a 1v1 in the Shadow Realm. For the refine, if Lin initiates combat or if the foe has more than 75% HP at the start of combat, she deals extra true damage equal to 15% of her speed stat and gets another plus 5 attack and speed. So, in general, Swift so Mulligan now grants plus 10 attack and speed during combat, Lin deals extra damage per hit based on her speed stat, and will disable all support skills from the foe's allies. As a reminder, Impenetrable Dark does not stop armor save skills. I think this is because they take place before combat starts, while Impenetrable Dark only disables skills active during combat. Before we move on though, let's refresh ourselves on Lazus K2. If Lin initiates combat or is within 2 spaces of an ally, she gets plus 6 total stats, and if the foe is a melee unit and Lin has 5 more speed than them, then the foe cannot counter. So with Swift Mulligan and Lazus K, Lin gets a much needed plus 16 attack and speed boost and plus 6 defense and res. I really thought they would have tried to go for a mixed phase playstyle with their fine, but Instead, it's really just pure offense. Instead, or keep in mind the two different space conditions between both skills. One is three spaces, the other one is two spaces. But if you're initiating combat, then you should be okay. 
In general, it seems like Lin will initiate with lots of attack and speed, extra true damage, and can proc or can protect herself from distant counter units. Clearly against ranged units, she's still gonna have to duke it out with them, but at least she's gonna disable enemy support skills against all threats. With the Refine and Lawsless of Gate 2, it seems like Lin would love to have no follow-up in the B slot. Pseudo Fire Sweep is great, but if she can't double, then she won't be killing anyway. No follow-up lets Lin get those doubles on melee units, and obviously we just want to stack as much attack and speed as possible. Sacred Seals can be things like the usual Swiss Sparrow, Attack and Speed Solo, or Blade Session. For other skills, you could instead use Low Speed and Defense for maximum damage output by ignoring enemy speed and defense field buffs. Desperation is fine, and since Lin can't get Fire Sweep against ranged foes, Flashing Blade and or Times Pulse would be great to get some specials going. Additionally, you really cannot go wrong with a C skill. With the Remix Buffs, Legend of Lin did get Joint Drive Speed, so you can just use that as well. To be honest, I think Swift Mulligan got a decent refine, but Legendary Lin is pretty much still just focusing on pure offense it looks like. She just gets more damage and more speed basically with the added bonus of Bramimon's unique C skill. That will help level the playing field, but I was hoping for maybe another kind of effect. There were plenty of comparisons with, are with Legendary Lin with Shamir as in the green infantry archer with a fire sweep effect. Again, to be clear, Lin cannot block counters against ranged threats. She is kind of tunneling in on the whole Saccade's blessing from Brave Lin to just stop distant counter units. Besides that, you just got an archer with a ton of attack and speed that can stop support skills. Not too bad, but a lot of those stats are literally just catching up with the crazy base stats of today's units. I do think Legendary Lin is better off now though. Her activation conditions are still a little funky, but at least her unique passive doesn't get outclassed by Fury 3 immediately anymore. Swift Mulligan also provides some actually decent combative effects. For our second Legendary Refine this month, we have Legend Ephraim's Flame Sigmund. He's a Lance Cavalier, but the OG Ephraim, who is a Lance Infantry unit, can also get Flame Sigmund for extra Divine Doom. In fact, this is the last shared weapon to get a refine, so unless those start coming back somehow, this is it. We'll talk about both units because Infantry and Cavalry just have such different skill pools, and Legendary Ephraim also got his remix buffs with this update. First off, Flame Segment got a buff to its old effect. Instead of needing more enemies nearby than allies, now it procs if Ephraim initiates combat or if he's just by himself. It also now grants plus 4 attack and defense in addition to the guaranteed follow-up effect. Flame Segment already grants a flat buster attack, so more damage is just fine. I will take far more defense as well. Basically, the weapon is easier to use, but Ephraim still needs to go in on the attack or just be off on his own. Now for the refine effect, at the start of combat if units HP is greater or equal to 25%, inflict minus 5 attack and defense on the foe and grant special cooldown charge plus 1 to unit per attack during combat. Alrighty then, so this is just a straight up solid good refine, no bias included. Minus 5 attack means less damage from either damage type which is appreciated since Ephraim has low base res and it makes his physical matchups even better. The minus 5 defense equates to 5 more damage and Ephraim has that guaranteed follow up attack as well. The cherry on top is going to be that special fighter type of extra cooldown reduction. We don't get guard, but you get the extra special cooldown charge on all actions including when Ephraim gets hit. He no longer needs heavy blade or steady breath, he just needs to stay healthy. That is extremely strong for Legendary Ephraim though because of his Solar Brace 2 remix buffs. It got a total revamp so instead of extra healing on special procs, it now grants counter 2 and no guard. Instead of healing on special procs, Legendary Ephraim just heals 10 HP after every single fight, including enemy phase. Obviously that extra healing is great to stay above 25% HP, but no guard is so good with extra special charge. You may recognize Solar Brace 2 as essentially brave Erica's Moonlight Bango, barring Kanto and no guard. No guard plus extra special charge meaning the legendary Ephraim always gets two cooldown charges every single action. Brave Erica can uh, replicate this using heavy blade but legendary Ephraim just needs this refine. OG Ephraim still gonna have to deal with guard effects but flame Sigmund with this refine makes OG Sigmund look like trash so no complaints here. While the refine is meant to synergize with solar brace 2, regular Ephraim definitely still scores a huge win here. Now let's talk about some skills and regular Ephraim does have a lot of skills that Legend Ephraim cannot access. As an infantry unit, Ephraim can run no follow-up to always guarantee he doubles plus stop enemy guaranteed follow-ups. Legendary Ephraim actually doesn't get no follow-up so he cannot win or if he cannot win the speed check then he can be stopped. OG Ephraim can also run times pulse to get a 4 quote on Aether or Gale Force. Unlike Brave Erica though, Legend Ephraim doesn't start with a 4 quote on Gale Force so he's gonna have to take a hit to get that 5 charges. While not unique, both Ephraims 
Solos can run solo skills very well. You can double up on attack and defense solo for just tons of damage on his two hits, but we are also getting an attack and res solo sacred seal so you can balance those stats out. While he won't get solar brace 2, OG Ephraim still has lots of beast skill options. You could run with desperation just for cheap offensive pressure when Ephraim gets low. Low attack and defense is great with the solo playstyle and honestly now that I look at it, Flame Sigmund's Refine is very close to Dussel's weapon in playstyle. Seems like Ephraim went back for some summer school classes to learn more from the master. Special Spiral could be a fun option since Ephraim just has or he's gonna always have the extra special charge. I would also consider Wrath since it's a bit easier to acquire. While not a cavalry unit, OG Ephraim can use Otter even Tempest if you really want that 3 movement. Now, personally as someone with a plus in Ephraim with full investment, I definitely have some thinking to do. I've always messed around with Ephraim's speed super boon and have kept distant counters since pretty much year one. I got an extra brave march, so I'm really tempted to power distant pressure because it's funny, and then use something like low attack and speed or low attack and defense. Maybe we'll try the Dusa build of just stacking more defense and res. I'm definitely gonna have to think about it a bit more. As for Legend of Ephraim, we already discussed Flame Segments Refined with Solar Brace 2. No guard plus Kanto plus 10 HP after every fight is fantastic. Ephraim looks like he's going to be a decent Gale Force unit, although he does need to take a counterattack. However, interestingly, this update, Legendary Hector also got his remix buffs for Osteus Pulse 2. It now has Times Pulse, so Hector could supply Legendary Ephraim with at least a 4 quid on Gale Force every single player phase. The GBA Bash Bros continue to make a good team. Now, Legend Ephraim did also get attack and defense solo 4 as a free skill. Like we said before, double solo skills are perfectly fine and they work well in the enemy phase which is great for staying alive. Kanto should let Ephraim retreat a little better as well to limit his exposure to the enemy team. For C skills, we can go with Rouse buff since the Ephraims do kind of want to be alone anyway. Ephraim can go beat up Orson for Rouse attack and defense. Mana skills are also great as we've seen with Brave Erica. If you do go for a minute skill, you could use something like attack and defense catch instead of solo. Ephraim can proc flame segment by initiating, so if you need to initiate next to an ally, you can still get those extra stats. Other skills you can use include pulse attack or defense smoke. Pulse smoke is great for lowering the chance of an enemy special. Attack smoke is great because the debuffs are going to stack with the refine. And defense smoke is good if you want to go for guilt first assaults. All in all, it's not the most advanced playstyle ever considering we have a lot of lance cannons that do similar things. But Flame Sigmund is a very neat weapon now. The extra damage and defensive stats are appreciated, but the extra special charge on all actions is really cool. Legend Ephraim makes it worth using with his new Solar Brace 2 skill, and OG Ephraim just gets a much stronger combative weapon. Moving on to the Tuja Legend 3 refines, we start with Brave Camilla. She's a flying healer with pretty good offensive stats. Actually though, the upcoming free flying healer Crusader Nana does power creep Brave Camilla in every stat and blows her out of the water in base attack and speed stats. That is due in part to BST creep, but Nana doesn't have unique staff and Camilla's one is getting her a fine. Sangrither, or however you want to pronounce it, is a 14 white staff that has built in dazzling staff. If Camilla initiates combat, she gets plus 4 attack and speed during combat, and after combat, she inflicts gravity on the target and adjacent foes. The only change to the base effect here is that Camilla gets plus 4 attack and speed instead of plus 3. Now, for the refine, at the start of or at the, start of the turn, Camilla inflicts a minus 7 defense and res debuff on foes within 3 columns or 3 rows centered on herself. Camilla also gets another plus 6 attack and speed while initiating. Good lord, so Brave Camilla was already a pretty decent offensive healer, but this refine just doubles down on that role. She effectively got an extra plus 7 attack and speed on initiations, and Camilla now emits a huge defense and res debuff for herself and the team. Really nothing to complain about here, Camilla can heal, she can debuff, and she can dish out some colorless damage as well, all while flying above terrain. In terms of builds, you honestly don't need to do much because healers only have so many skills. Camilla already has Wrathful Staff with the Wrathful plus Dazzling Staff combo, and she comes with Attack and Speed Push 4 for plus 7 Attack and Speed at the cost of HP. Since her release though, we have gotten some really fun skills you can try out. Speed and Res Rain in the C slot just gives Camilla even more damage output. We also got Attack and Speed Sacred Seals healers can use like Attack and Speed Solo or Blade Session. Somehow it's fine for healers to get plus 9 attack and speed, but god forbid they use Swiss Spare too. Now, while attack and speed push 4 is okay, I really do not like the recoil damage portion. It is just annoying for longer PvE maps, and attack and speed catch is just a better replacement. Camilla won't lose HP, she can get more attack and speed, and she inflicts debuffs anyways, including her gravity status, so you don't have to you don't have to fight full health targets to get at least some attack and speed. Speaking of gravity, Camilla can do some nasty things with the newish movement of healing assist skills. 
Rescue Plus and Return Plus are drawback and reposition respectively for healers. The thing is that since Camilla inflicts AoE gravity, if you dance her, she can then reposition the dancer backwards and now you're just so far away from the enemy team's attack range. Very disgusting tactic. Now Camilla also can run the new Far Trace B skills to combine with Kanto. It may not always work and she loses Wrathless Staff, but you could use this with something like Double Savage Blow to chip away at grouped up enemies while gravity stalling them all day long. You kind of lose out on her offensive role, but it's an option if you really want to. For some other skills, we have even an odd recovery. If you want extra healing and debuff cleansing, this is always a good option, but it's hard to get. Camilla is also free to run fly mobility skills, and those can go on the C slot or Sacred Seal slots. Overall, Brave Camilla may not be top dog in base stats anymore, but have unique staff is a very valuable trait, perfectly solid refine, and Camilla can really make use of a lot of the newer skills. Our next CY unit is Brave Makaya. Seems like we just talked about her, but we're gonna talk about her more. Brave Makaya is a flying green mage, and her Light of Dawn got some changes. It's still effective against armor and cavalry foes while granting plus 3 res. It also keeps its old base effect of granting bonus stats based on debuffs on the foe. However, Makaya now also gets plus 4 all stats on top if the foe is more than 75% HP or if they have a penalty on them. To be clear, Light of Dawn sort of functions like the Plagian weapons, but instead of inflicting more debuffs on debuff stats, Makaya will gain buffs herself from the debuffs on the foe. If they have a minus 6 attack debuff, Makaya gets plus 6 attack. Each stat was calculated individually. Now further refined, if Makaya initiates combat or is within 2 spaces of an ally, grant plus 6 attack at res, and she makes a guaranteed follow up attack. Things should seem familiar here because this is almost the exact same as OG Makaya's Donnie Refine. All the Makayas have due effectiveness and it looks like they're also meant to get follow ups and bonus attack and res. This isn't bad at all considering Brave Makaya has to or had to depend on speed for doubles. She will pretty much keep the same debuff and playstyle, but now Makaya gets that free follow up attack and an extra plus 10 attack and res to work with. She also gets plus 4 demons and res, which is appreciated. An extra plus 10 attack is very nice for one shotting more armor and cavalry units. In terms of builds, we do need to talk about Yoon's Whisper, which is Brave Makaya's unique B skill. It basically is sabotage attack and speed, so Makaya can inflict attack and speed debuffs on grouped up enemies if she has more res than them. Minus 6 attack and speed translates to plus 6 attack and speed for Makaya, so Yoon's Whisper is fine to keep. In fact, you could pair her with Brave Camilla to cover demons and res debuffs. Since this Makaya actually gets some speed boost, you can stack speed if you want to try and compete with other or either no follow-up users or avoid doubles from the enemy. Makaya should have enough speed to win speed checks if her follow-up gets cancelled by slower tanks, but you never know. Being able to avoid doubles can keep her alive as well, but it's definitely an uphill battle against naturally fast units. If you want, you can even bust out wind sweep speed Makaya to stop on armor distant counter threats. Like with Camilla, catch skills are great for this Makaya since she's debuffing foes anyway and speed and res rain is the natural C skill of choice. Now if you don't care about speed, then perhaps you can try to patch up Makaya's low defense stat. I wouldn't say it's the best idea, but theoretically defense and res menace can work nicely for Makaya. It gives her defense and res debuffs and defense and res buffs. Then Light of Dawn turns these or turns the debuffs into more stats for Makaya. With Yoon's Whisper, you cover all four stats, and you can try to use skills like Attack and Defense Catch, Sturdy Impact, or Attack and Defense Solo to try and just pump up Makaya's defense as much as possible. For some other skills, Makaya does have Attack and Res Bond 4 already. It's a bit tough to use if you want to initiate, but it can work fine, especially for tanking mages. Like with Ephraim, you can use Desperation with the free follow-up attack if you have other debuffers on your team. For other debuffing skills, Attack and Res Menace is another option, and Res Ploy is a pretty good budget skill. Makaya does have ground orders by default in her C slot, so that's also fine to keep as well. Overall, Brave Makaya gets a simple body effect of a fine, free follow up attacks is the Makaya special, and an extra plus 10 attack and res is fantastic with her dual effectiveness. If you can get debuffs on the enemy, then that's when things start to get interesting. Our next unit is Brave Elliewood, another Lance Cavalier. With Brave Erica joining the game, let's see what Nenesis Ice Lance can do. The base effect did get some huge buffs, it is still effective against dragons and beast foes and still grants plus 3 speed. Now if Elliewood initiates combat or is within 2 spaces of an ally, he gets plus 5 tall stats and neutralizes the effects that prevent units follow up attacks during combat. The Ice Lance got some big upgrades. Before this weapon was player phase only, but it can proc on both phases now. Its stat boost also got an extra plus one to all stats, and anyone gets the offensive portion of no follow up. This is extremely good since he wants to be a speedy unit. 
Now for the refine, if Eliwood initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grant another plus five to all stats and Eliwood's gonna get dodge, up to 40% damage reduction based on how much Eliwood outspeeds the opponent. So thankfully Eliwood has these same conditions for activating both part of its weapons. He also gets plus 10 to all stats in total and adds dodge to his no fall up effect with dragon and beast effectiveness. Now that's a weapon. First off, Cavaliers can't get dodge skills, Eliwood's gonna need to earn it, but he can easily use it against much slower units. With the added mixed phase activation conditions, Brave Eliwood also becomes a much more flexible unit, plus 10 to all stats is definitely good, and he's always gonna double if he wins that speed check. So in terms of skills, Eliwood has Swift Sparrow 3, which is perfectly fine to keep, but Surge Sparrow is very fun and attacking speed minus is also really good for trying to get dodge to work. If you got a spare Brave Erica, then Eliwood can also put those skills to good use. For beast skills, you can go with low speed and defense, desperation, or speed and defense in your trace. Cavaliers don't have a ton of options, but Lowe's and Kanto have proven to be quite powerful. Low speed would also help with the speed checks for dodge. Now, since Eliwood has part of no follow up, he can employ wind sweep. This is mainly to avoid getting bodied by counterattacks, and it's just kind of funny with dodge because on the player phase, you don't take any damage, while on the enemy phase, you get damage reduction. It becomes that situation where you don't want Eliwood to just get free hits in. Now with no fall up, wind sweep, and beast effectiveness, Eliwood would be able to attack Fallen Edelgard twice without getting touched, and she cannot block that extra damage. I'm not sure if this is a guaranteed win for all types of Edelgards out there, but the main idea is that at least Eliwood walks away without taking Bonfire directly to the face. Hopefully he can just KO her or bring her low enough to finish off. To go with any offensive builds, obviously attack and speed solo or catch work just fine. Again, you can use or you can just keep Swiss Sparrow 3. Another skill Eliwood has is Rally Attack and Defense and Attack and Speed Ruse. If you want some support for your team, then that's fine to keep. And since that Ice Lance is now a mixed phase weapon, Eliwood can benefit from the debuffs and guard with his weapon active. Last, like the other cows, you can take Heavy Blade. In a very short span, we got three pretty interesting Lance Cavaliers to use. Brave Erica is a beast with her Moonlight Bangle specials and great base stats. Legendary Ephraim brings extra special charge plus no guard with free fall up attacks. Brave Eliwood has that dragon and beast effect in this, which is very relevant currently, and has that open beast slot while still having no fall up and dodge. There's more to each unit, of course, but point is, they're all pretty good. Alright, last one, Brave Alm is a sort of tree unit, one of the hardest classes to prove yourself in and Brave Alm's niche was mainly focused around tank busting with his Sense Skill A Skill. Sense Skill grants bonus true damage equal to 25% of Alm's attack stat per hit which is insane, but it comes with 7 recoil damage. The main issue was getting Alm to double since he's not super fast and you could take advantage of his lack of DC or stop his fall up attacks. Brave Alm isn't exactly solving all those issues, but Draco Falchion is doubling down on making Alm do big damage. It did get some tweaks, it is still effective against dragons, grants him Alm plus their attack, and now just gives Alm one extra movement all the time, legendary Sigurd style. It also changed the activation condition to always be active when initiating or if Alm is alone, and he still gets plus 5 to all stats. Basically, Alm is just a cavalry unit without any of the drawbacks. The movement for free is amazing and his weapon is easier to work with as well. For the refine, at the start of combat, if Alm has more than 25% HP, he gets another plus 5 tall stats, and if he is fighting a physical damage foe and Alm has more speed than them, he neutralizes effects that prevent his follow-up attacks and the foe cannot counterattack. So plus 10 to all stats with partial follow-up sure sounds familiar, but instead of dodge, Alm kinda just has wind sweep hence the icon of the refine. Wind sweep only works against physical damage units and you need to win a speed check. Its fall up penalty is negated by no fall up, so like Brave Eliwood, Brave Alm kinda just has that same interaction just with this refine. So through movement and plus sense all stats is great, but you will also need to put in work if you want to wind sweep faster foes. That is okay though because this is mainly targeted at slower tanks like arm units and this will allow Alm to get through their defenses. Combining Draco Falchion with Sense Scale will allow Alm to bust tanks with two hits without being countered. Against units like Brave Hector or Fallen Edelgard, Alm should easily outspeed them so he won't get countered, and Sense Scale can help get through their insane defenses. Low speed and defense is sort of the best option to disable their defense field buffs, and I do feel like Alm's natural threats and attack and speed 3 should get upgraded to attack and speed menace. Attack and defense menace also works pretty well. You really just want to stack as much attack as possible, and hopefully Alm can bust through those tanky units while staying safe. Now, the issue with Sense Scale, which is still persist here, is that it has 7 recoil damage 
damage and it takes up the A slot. That means Alm can't use a stat booster or distant counter like Legend Dimitri. He's really powerful, but you do make some sacrifices. I think playing into it is fine though. If you want, Alm could try a Gilfer set with Heavy Blade and Times Pulse. Since Alm has no follow-up and can prevent counterattacks while having three movement, he could be pretty fun Gale forcing around. Sense skill may be an issue for this if Alm one-shots a squishy target, but you can swap it out for something else if you really want. Another issue is that Alm only gets no follow-up against physical damage units, so you have to pay attention here. For some additional skills, you could try Mystic Boost to offset Sense skill's recoil. Not sure if that's worthwhile, but Draco Falchion does have an HP condition as well, so there's some non-synergy there you can try to patch up. Like with Brave Valleywood, you can combine no follow-up, wind sweep, and dodge together. The main issue with this is Sense skill, you lose out an entire boost stat boosting A skill, and recoil damage is not exactly ideal here. If you want to improve special cooldown, then you could try special spiral, maybe with Glimmer or Ruptured Sky. Steady Breath as a seal could also be pretty fun. You could use it with Times Pulse with Bond first for some big damage procs. I feel like despite Draco Falchion's pretty nice refine, Sen skill still draws concern for Brave Alm. I mean, you look at Brave Dimitri or Legend Dimitri's atrocity, and it just makes a mockery of Sen skill. Plus, it's a B skill which allows everyone and their mom to use distant counter on their Dimitri. Sensco being in the A slot and having recoil damage puts a hamper on Alm's options, but it's still incredibly powerful. I think Alm's gonna be fine, or at least better off, but I really wish Sensco could get some kind of remix too. That's gonna be it for this update, a massive 7 refines, including Choose Your Legends 3. Let me know if you'll be using any of these new refines and what kind of builds you got planned. Next, we're gonna be covering the new Crusaders banner. See you then.